In this episode, I talk about how your pleasure creates a greater resonance of loving for yourself and the world around you. I touch into selfishness, worthiness, being self-centered or indulgent, ways we use pleasure to avoid or ways we skip over pleasure and don't give it to ourselves. And lastly, how pleasure can be in service to the places that are unpleasant. The Embody podcast accompanies you on your journey of remembering and embodying your true nature, integration, and alignment with your vibrational clarity, self-love, and living a life of beauty and wholeness. It's a menu of transformative healing tools, experientials, meditations, and practices from a blend of family constellations, somatic therapies, and holistic and spiritual practices sprinkled with vulnerable conversations with people who have the courage to be themselves, Alive Now episodes with updates on my personal process, and reverie episodes that are spiritual succulents that honor, reveal, hug, shake, or stir you into love. I'm your host, Candice Wu, integrative and intuitive healing facilitator and artist. Before we jump into the experiential, I want to mention that the Embody podcast was listed as one of the top 100 self-love podcasts. You can find that list at candiswu.com slash top 100, and it will redirect you to the proper link, or you can find it in the show notes here on my website. I'm so appreciative to be mentioned on that and listed on that. And um, it's really exciting to see so many self-love podcasts out there and all doing it in their own ways. So if you want to check out some other ideas or other podcasts or see the listing on there, I think when I last checked, we're like number 39 or something like that. So I want to just give a shout out to Anuj. Agarwal, who is the founder of Feedspot, who um, created that blog and that listing. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. Great to have you here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm just delighted to talk about this topic today, pleasure. When I think of pleasure, I think of the whole spectrum Life is full of vast amounts of pleasure for us to experience, and I didn't always see it that way. When I was younger, I pretty much was like a shell of myself. I was pretty traumatized and overwhelmed. I think I could experience certain pleasures or certain things that were good, but I couldn't quite let it absorb all the way in because my body was so overwhelmed and traumatized. So over the years, healing my body, healing my heart and my soul have been giving me space to enjoy things the way they are, enjoy life the way it is. And one of the most profound types of healing through somatic experiencing was just to notice the very, very, very simple and basic things that give me pleasure. At the point in my life that I really focused on doing that, I had been doing maybe five to seven, eight years of healing work solidly, and I become, I became more naturally able to enjoy pleasures. But when I focused on it to let it grow in me, and allowed my vibration, allowed my ability, my um, creative power to fill into that space, it did even more for me. It was amazing. And I saw just how much my nervous system and my body responded to that, and that grew in my life then. So when I'm talking about the basic things, even just enjoying the little bit of sunlight that's creeping into the window as I'm recording this podcast and that little bird that's sitting right outside, these were things I just couldn't enjoy when I was younger. It's like, I don't have time for that. I have much greater things to care about. But if I actually ask myself, 
do I like looking at that? Do I like seeing that? Yes. My body says yes. And even to look at the things in my space, I'm looking at this plant that I put next to the window with the shadows and the lights on it. I have feathers. I really like looking at feathers and having them around me and crystals. Even the colors in my space or the textures, the shapes, the lines. If you just spend a moment to look at what's pleasant in your space, what does that do for your body? Does it give you a breath? Does it give you a quieter moment? Appreciation or gratitude? Sometimes we're running so fast at full speed that we cannot appreciate these things. You know, there is that saying, stop and smell the roses. What if the roses were everything? What if this is why we're here? to enjoy, to take pleasure, to create pleasure and joy in our lives and to resonate and vibrate at that space, in that space where it is just so who we are in our enjoyment that others around us too feel that and it's contagious and it ripples into their lives and pushes to the surface whatever they need to look at to get themselves to their own beautiful frequency, to their own joy and beauty. So the simple things, all the way to the sensual things, things I enjoy to eat, things that um, allow my body to feel in myself, like dance, to be in presence with a horse and just enjoy that. I love it. And why not? Why not give ourselves those joys? If there's anything you can do to give yourself joy right now or pleasure right now, you have that choice and that freedom and it only gives you more. And then pleasures all the way to sexual pleasures, relationships, intimacy uh, in its many forms, in vulnerability, in connection, in physical or sexual connection. I love it all. And my body says yes to it all. But it hasn't always said yes to it. There have been blocks there have been things that said in me no you're not allowed to have that you're not worthy of it or you don't deserve it or because other people are suffering why should you have this the idea that if other people are suffering then you must suffer too and you having joy or pleasure is selfish cruel or mean or not fair, or unjust. So this is going to be the topic of today. At its best, when you are experiencing joy and pleasure, you are in alignment with your true vibration, what you're here for, or the beauty of the human experience. I believe that pleasure is that cue that compass to you and what you're here for because each person's pleasure is completely different there are some more foundational pleasures that we may all enjoy like shelter and food and then each individual has particular exquisite or niche areas of things that really light them up. And so our pleasure is our compass to who we are and the compass to loving ourselves. It guides the way and it guides our movement forward. What do we desire? What do we want? All of these things are what gives us life, nourishment. And we've had this idea, I think, that we have to earn it. We have to earn the ability to have pleasure. Therefore, 
we are not inherently worthy, but we have to get ourselves to some enoughness to be in that worthiness. When you think into that, when you feel into that, how does your body feel? I have to earn my pleasure. That you are not inherently worthy. To me, it gives me a tiny bit of constriction in my chest and in my shoulders. Whereas if I feel into, I am worthy. I have an opening. And it hasn't always been an opening. Sometimes you might feel different emotions come up. Just even addressing your own worthiness to have pleasure. Your own worthiness to be in joy. To enjoy. So as different feelings come up, other belief sets may come up about it. But why do we hold ourselves to that if it's bringing us a level of suffering? And it is actually true. We are worthy. Because you exist, you are worthy of being in your true essence, of being in yourself and realizing your experience in any way you want. So when we look at our worthiness, it often connects with other people. If other people are suffering, then I, then I can't possibly be worthy of having it. And it is one way to look at this is from a family constellations perspective. It's as if we're saying, since you're suffering, I will suffer too. And I will be with you then. I can love you from here. I love you, so I will do it with you. And I don't want to leave you alone. And so at its core, it's coming from love. There's this sense that we love, and loving can be paired with trying to alleviate someone else's suffering or being with them through the suffering. And that just leaves us with two people suffering. Whereas if we go deeper into the power of the human spirit and our deeper freedom, we know we have a choice. And when one person takes up the choice to say, I'm going to be in my joy and I see you in your suffering and I am worthy. And because I'm a reflection of the worthiness, you also can see that there's another way. And it's a reflection of you because I am a reflection of you and you are completely worthy too. And so it gives people who are suffering the chance to see that possibility that they too could choose a moment of pleasure or a life of beauty. That they too could embrace and look towards the things that are good in their lives, there's always something you could appreciate that you're alive right now, that you have a breath, that you can move your body perhaps if you can. There's always something. And it's part of the experiencing of the now. So it's my belief and my freedom to sense into that when we are in our joy or pleasure, we actually are in a deeper loving to the world around us. Because it says, I trust and know you're capable of this if you want it. And that you have complete freedom and autonomy to choose your life the way you want it and to experience your life the way you want to and are. And the suffering that I see that you're experiencing or that you're telling me that you're experiencing may be part of your journey that is not for me to judge or to save. But for me to see and witness you is my loving. And for me to be in my fullness is my loving. So we actually give more to people from from that core part of us that is free and powerful than we do when we try to rescue them. 
than we do when we give up our powers or our abilities and capacities to enjoy ourselves and feel worthiness. When you're in your fullness or when you're in the ability to enjoy your life and give to yourself, the one thing that only you can give is the gift of being you and enjoying life how you want it. Then you're able also to be fuller in presence with others around you and with the suffering that's around you. You give other people the possibility and the, the knowing that there's a different way to live or and or there are other things you can do to support people who want it from this place that you give more to yourself. So you're just more of yourself. You have more to give if you want to give it. About five years ago, I was having king crab legs from um, the grocery store, steaming them in my home with my partner at the time. And I just started crying as I was eating them. And I was like, how can I deserve this? And he was like, what do you mean? As he was like happily smacking his lips and licking his fingers. (laughs) And I said, well, my grandparents seem so much in suffering like they felt like they were poor all their lives and they lived poor for a long time and they barely give themselves this kind of pleasure like indulge in this how could i then am i allowed to do that do i betray them if i have pleasure so that gets to the core of things there's a sense of i love my grandparents, or it could be, I love humanity, I love my friend, I love them so much that if I were to have something that I perceive they don't have, do I betray them? I must be betraying my love for them or betraying them. And it's just not true, but it is the tangle that we get ourselves into. Sure, sometimes those people react if you have and they don't. And that could be part of our sense of betrayal. But it's actually creating an uprising in them, giving them a reaction so that they can look at something and connect it with the core of their being, which perhaps knows that they can have it. And they get angry because you have it, have something that they could have. Or they have the belief that they can't have that. And so something emerges for them that otherwise gets left in the shadows or stays under, just living and lurking there. So something can emerge. When we step into joy, when we be in our pleasure, when we give ourselves peace, when people around us react, Perhaps it's giving them just the right grist to look at and to be the pathway stepping them forward to their pleasure, their joy, their peace. But of course, they'd have to take that up as well. It doesn't always just land there. We each have that responsibility in ourselves to to find a way to give it to ourselves to heal what needs to be healed if we want that, or to be in our experience the way it is. But we can wake up to that greater loving for ourselves and others. So the resolve that I found with my grandparents in me was that, of course they want more for me. They want me to have it all. And in some ways, They suffered or they worked very hard to get where they got so that I could have more. And even if they don't show that in their human form, that on the soul level, I can trust that my grandparents actually are enlivened and 
they receive more by me having more. So the more I am, the more they are. The more I am and receive, the more they receive and feel fulfilled. And they can also feel that they've done it. They've done a good job. It makes them happy to see me happy. And when we are at our best as humans, no matter what we are going through, there's a part of us that can see that we are happy when others are happy. That it gives us more when someone else around us has joy, knows their pleasure. And it reminds us that we have that power too. It reminds us that we are extremely powerful beings with the potential for everything and anything. And that if we could even choose in a moment to be in pleasure, to notice what's already here, maybe that leads us to the next breadcrumb of pleasure. Maybe that leads us to a greater sense of who we are and what we're here for. Maybe that allows healing, the capacity for healing in other spaces that are unpleasant. And just to strike it home a little more, imagine someone looking at you and saying, oh, you're suffering, I'm gonna suffer too. And I'm going to go right in there and and try to save you or help you by doing it too. It probably doesn't feel great. One, someone else suffering on your behalf. Two, this approach of saviorism. You need to be saved from your experience that something about your experience is wrong or not good enough, even if you're suffering. Versus feeling someone in their joy and looking upon you with love. Being in their true vibration and extending their hand. And saying to you with their presence, you are whole. And I love you. And I'm not here to save you, but I'm here to love you. I'm here to see you. And I know you can do it. I know you can do it for yourself, and I've got your back. I know you have it within you. This is a different approach that comes from us aligning ourselves with our own vibration, from us being in our own pleasure and giving that to ourselves daily, moment to moment, or when we can, when it's right, and then sprinkling our loving around us from that centered, grounded, loving space. That gives everyone so much more. I've often been called selfish for choosing what I choose for myself, I've often been called indulgent or self-centered. And I've just learned that that's okay. I've learned to feel and heal through some of the pain of being called that in a critical way, especially when I was younger, that stopped me from having the pleasure and and worthiness of pleasure in the now, in the adult life. And accepted the parts of me that need to be selfish, need to be centered, self-centered, centered on myself in order to have joy. And if you're indulging, you know, that word means different things at different times. Sometimes just having a little ounce of enjoyment to someone that says, that is indulgent and too indulgent perhaps 
and someone else's threshold is miles away from there. But what's wrong with indulging? When I see a horse come up to me and sees a carrot in my hand, they're like, I want that, yum, and they're so happy, and they just go yum, 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 and chomp it up. Is that indulgent? Is that just being authentic and congruent and giving ourselves the lovely joys of life? So what's wrong with indulgent? On the other hand, sometimes we're choosing pleasure to avoid things or we're indulging in things to avoid other things that really need our attention to. Maybe using sex to avoid looking at the painful beliefs we have or the painful patterns we take up that hurt us. So when we use pleasure to avoid something, the question is, when I'm choosing that pleasure, what's behind it? Am I using it to avoid? Or am I using it to support myself so that I can look and not avoid? Because it gives us Uh, gives our nervous system a sense of beauty and safety. What that can do is remind our nervous system that we can feel safe, we can feel good, and we have then more capacity in our being, in our ability to navigate our emotions, more capacity to look in the hard places and to digest those feelings, those challenges, those discomforts. And if we use pleasure in that way as a service to the unpleasant, then we're not just splitting and choosing only joy and doing the spiritual bypass thing. We are whole. We are all of those things and able to look in all the places. So my proposal is to use the pleasant as a service to the unpleasant and to allow ourselves to have the support through the pleasure, the beauty, the safety, to go into those dark corners and that that is a service to our whole being to give us even more pleasure. So it is this cycle that serves itself. If we are mindless about it, as in we're not using our awareness to notice the pleasure and enjoy it, we just skip past it and go to the next one, we don't fully absorb that pleasure, that experience. We're just going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. We're insatiable. That's suggestive of using pleasure in a way that avoids but it's also avoiding the pleasure. We skip right past it and never get filled up with it. How can we hang out there and fully take it in, beautifully take it in, let it feed every part of us, let it be in our energetic system contained and then move through us so it also needs digestion and that we are touched and affected by it in the aftermath of that digestion so that we're more, so that it becomes a part of our body, our being, the cells of our being, the resonance that we are naturally then. And why do we skip it? Why do we skip that pleasure? Are we uncomfortable in it? Does it bring up pain? Does it bring up the question of worthiness, betrayal, or suffering? And it might. Because when we touch into something that gives us safety in our nervous system, 
the body says, oh, you're safer, you're feeling safer. We need to look at this painful thing. We need to look at this thing that gets in the way of the fullness of it. There's energy being locked up here. We want it to integrate with the whole in the flowing state of your natural being. So it will show you perhaps the painful part when the pleasure comes. So there are reasons that we have trouble staying in the pleasure and digesting it fully. And maybe there are other reasons too, experiences you've had that have told you or that you've walked away with believing that you're not allowed to enjoy that or you need to work hard for that. That's not how it works. (laughs) And it's funny because horses know how it works. Children know how it works. They just take the cookie and enjoy it. (laughs) Or they just go for the thing that just their body innately draws towards because it gives them life. And we as adults can sometimes stop that and try to impress upon young people that they needed to work for that or they can't have that. Or they can't imagine or dream like that. And it doesn't quite make sense to a young magical being sometimes. So was that you? Was that you when you were younger? And were there things that that you experienced that you then took away from it that you can't enjoy, you can't have pleasure, you can't be worthy until you do X, Y, and Z, or it's never enough. This is how life is. You've got to keep doing X, Y, and Z. It's always suffering. You're looking at the bad or the problems. What was it like for you? And can you just skip to the pleasure now? So yes, you might tend to some of those dynamics or experiences. You might heal those up, but also spend time in the pleasure. Go right for it. Skip all the stuff. Sometimes it's irrelevant anyway. And go right for the thing that gives you more so that then you can look and love more deeply in yourself and into the world around you. Or that you can do whatever it is you're here to set out to do. Whatever it is your life journey and experience and your heart desires. This was fun to talk about. I welcome your questions, your objections, places you get stuck. I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to write that in the comments of whatever social media you're touching into or connecting with me on, or send me an email. I'm at embody at candacewu.com. I love this pleasure conversation and what it might bring up. And I'm um, always interested in hearing what it brings up in you, whether that touches into cultural things trauma experiences i i love to be able to think about it from all those lenses but i hope this gives you even just a little ounce or iota of pleasure or the possibility of pleasure in your life i talk about pleasure a lot on the podcast i also have wanted to talk about pleasure a lot more, especially with the sensual and sexual pleasures. Um, but what's out there already can be found at candicewu.com slash podcast. You can just search pleasure right in the database, or you can tune into some of the direct podcasts. Here are some of them. Episode 136 at candicewu.com slash EP136 called Pleasure, Beauty, and Capacity. Also, Restore the Ways of Being, Carving Out New Territory and Energy at candicewu.com slash EP132. Episode 128, When Discomfort Ripens, Calibrate to Pleasure at candicewu.com slash EP128. That one's about intergenerational trauma, Um, 
and just calibrating to pleasure as your compass. And episode 122, Align to Pleasure and Pragya. At candisu.com slash EP122. And uh, an episode with Roxanne Partridge, who is at Embody Period, episode 100, coming back to your native psychic land, menstrual sexual empowered embodiment from the depths up and out. She's all about pleasure. That's at candisu.com slash Roxanne, R O X A N N E. And there are two more with guests. One, Alita Kai at Candice.com slash EP62, talking about sensuality, self-love, permission, and submission, as well as the episode with Harmony Niles at Candice.com slash Harmony, talking about erotic pleasures and fantasies, core erotic themes, and BDSM. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining in. You can support the podcast if you'd like to at candicewoo.com slash support or send me a Venmo at candice-woo-2. I appreciate every share, every like, every um, sending the podcast to a friend and every donation. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for being out there and thank you for being you. And I hope you find something in this moment that you find pleasurable. Just even though in this moment, without doing anything at all, where can you focus your attention that is already pleasurable, inside or out? <laughs>